classifying critical points using the original function. So now that we have a good understanding of how to find critical points, we need to determine how we can use them to find local maximums and minimums. So in this video, we'll explore how we can use the original function to classify our critical points as local maximums, local minimums, or neither. So let's start with the function f of x equals 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 72x plus 12. In order to find the critical points, just as a reminder, we set the first derivative equal to zero or look for where the first derivative is undefined. So here we're considering 12x squared minus 12x minus 72. And we wanna know when does that equal zero? There's nowhere that this function is gonna be undefined, so we only have to consider the equal zero case. So again, we're gonna factor out the 12 to make the factoring a little bit easier. If you're more comfortable using the quadratic equation, that's okay too. So here, if I keep factoring down, I end up with 12 times x minus three, x plus two equals zero. So I have three things multiplied together equals zero, which means one of them has to equal zero. I know that 12 doesn't equal zero, so I set x minus three equal to zero, and I get x equals three. If I set x plus two equal to zero, I get x equals negative two. So now I know that my function has two critical points. The way that I use f of x to determine what those critical points are doing is mostly by looking at a picture of what the original function looks like. So I know I need to pay special attention to what's happening at three and at negative two. So let's look at a picture of this function. So graphing my function 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 72x plus 12 gives me the graph below. So I want to see what's happening at 3 and at negative 2. I know these are critical points, so I know this is exactly where the local max and min are. So going to 3, I go down to where the graph is, and I can see very clearly that this is a local minimum. Similarly, if I go to negative 2, I can see that I'm at the top of a hill, and therefore I have a local maximum. Now, the rules for classifying functions using the original function have to do with looking at whether the function was increasing and then decreasing, or decreasing and then increasing. So let's look at what was happening at negative two. So at negative two, as we moved from left to right, we were increasing before our critical point and decreasing after. So if your original function goes from increasing to decreasing, you have a local max. At three, you can see that as we went from left to right, we were decreasing first, we were going in the downward direction, and then we were increasing. So if your original function goes from decreasing to increasing around your critical point, you have a local minimum. So these are the rules that we're gonna use to classify our critical points using the original function. So again, we can look at whether things are increasing or decreasing on the original function to classify. And if f of x does not change, then it's neither. So if the function is increasing the whole time or decreasing the whole time, then we don't have a local max or a min. So we need to change from one to the other for one of these things to exist. Let's look at a couple of examples that we used before to find critical points to see if now we can classify them using the pictures of the original function. So suppose that f of x equals 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. We now want to use the graph of this function to classify the critical points and determine if they are local maxes, local mins, or neither. So in a previous video, we found that the derivative of this function was 6x plus 6, and the resulting critical point was negative 1. By graphing 3x squared plus 6x plus 1, we get the graph shown here. And if we go to negative 1, we can see that the resulting critical point is going to be a local minimum. The function was decreasing and then increasing. So x equals negative one is a local minimum. Suppose that f of x equals two x cubed minus three x squared minus 36 x plus 14. We wanna use the graph of this function to classify the critical points of f of x as local maxes, mins, or neither. So remember, the derivative of this function was six x squared minus six x minus 36. 
Factoring that out, we can find critical points at negative 2 and x equals 3. Going to our graph, we see that at negative 2, our function was increasing and then decreasing, which produced a local maximum. So x equals negative 2 is a local max. At 3, we can see that our function was decreasing then increasing, which creates this cup shape. So that means x equals 3 is a local minimum. So again, by looking at the picture of the original function and going to where our critical points are, we're able to classify them by looking at what the function is doing in terms of increasing and decreasing, and also having a sense visually of what these things look like. Example three, suppose f of x equals x squared over x minus two. Use the graph of the function to classify the critical points as local maximums, minimums, or neither. So again, our first derivative, we have to use the quotient rule and once we simplify the results, we get x squared minus 4x divided by x minus 2 all squared. Now, from there, we were able to find that our critical points are x equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 4. So now we can go to the graph to determine what kind of critical points they are. At 0, our function is increasing until 0 and then decreasing afterwards. So x equals 0 is a local max. At x equals two, we can see that the function is not continuous. It shoots off to infinity in either direction and doesn't create a continuous local maximum or minimum. It's not the smallest point or biggest point in any small area. So x equals two is neither. Finally, x equals four, we can see was decreasing at first and then increasing afterwards. So if we go from decreasing to increasing, that means that x equals four is a local minimum. So the graph really helps us see what kind of critical points these are. Let's try another. Suppose f of x equals x cubed times one minus x to the fourth. Use the graph to classify the critical points as local maxes, local mins, or neither. So remember that when we took the derivative of this function, we had to do a lot of algebraic work to get it into its factored form. However, once we did, we were able to get that the first derivative equals x squared times one minus x cubed times three minus seven x. From there, we were able to find our critical points, which were zero, one, and three sevenths. Going to the graph of this function, x cubed times one minus x to the fourth, we see the picture below. So we can go point by point from the critical points to figure out if they're local maxes, mins, or neither. However, before we do that, I want to point out the scale that's on this function in order to be able to graph it. So in order to even be able to see what these critical points were doing, I had to zoom really, really, really far in. So you can see that it only goes up as high as 0 0.01 is the highest point, but you can see 0 0.008. So there was a lot of zooming to be able to see what was going on. And before I zoomed, the whole picture looked like a flat line all near zero. So make sure that if you know that there's critical points and you're graphing something and you're using some sort of tool to see it, that you zoom in enough to understand what's happening. Now, at x equals zero, we can see that the function is increasing to the left and increasing to the right. So even though it flattens out enough for us to have a critical point, it's not a local maximum or a local minimum because it doesn't change what it's doing. So x equals zero is neither. x equals one, we can see is over here. And you can see that to the left we're decreasing and to the right we're increasing. So x equals one is a local minimum. And x equals 3 sevenths, that's this point over here. We can see that to the left we're increasing, to the right we're decreasing. So that tells us that 3 sevenths is a local maximum. So again, we use the derivative to help us find where the critical points were, but then we were able to use the original function's picture to help us classify whether they were local maximums, minimums, or neither. So graphs are how we mostly use the original function to do classification. However, if we have some information about critical points, we can also use tables to talk about the original function and how we would classify critical points. So let's look at an example of that. 
Suppose that f of x and f prime of x are continuous functions that are differentiable. Additionally, suppose that we know that f of x has a critical point at x equals 5 and x equals 11. Use the table of values for f of x below to determine if the critical points are likely to be local maximums or local minimums. So again, it's important to know what kind of information we have. This is a table of f of x. So remember, when we've been using these rules here, we've been looking at where f of x is increasing and decreasing. So let's take a look at what's happening here. So 4, 8, 10. So from x equals 0 to x equals 4, my function's increasing. And then I have 10, 8, 5, 2. So from x equals 4 to x equals 10, my function is decreasing. And then 2, 7, 10, my function is again increasing. So again, I don't know exactly where I change from increasing to decreasing. I just have a general sense of where it may be. So knowing that I have a critical point at 5, I'm looking at what's happening before 5 and what's happening after 5. So to the left of 5, my function was increasing, but then after 5, my function was decreasing. So if my function changes from increasing to decreasing in the original function, then that critical point is most likely a local maximum. Similarly, if I come over to 11, which is between 10 and 12, if I look at what's happening to the left, my function was decreasing. When I look at what's happening to the right, my function was increasing. So if my function changes from decreasing to increasing, that makes that critical point a local minimum. So x equal 11 is likely a local minimum. So again, I'm able to look at what the function is doing near the point to try to give a good solid argument for why it would be a local max or a local min based on where the critical points are.